Welcome to the Tweet Spice core training videos. Let's get started. Now the Tweet Spice interface is very simple. First off, we have the account information panel at the top left. Then next we have the menu options, which is just the standard menu options like you would find in any uh, standard Microsoft or any other Windows program. Then below the menu options we have some shortcut buttons which is to make your life more simple when you're using Tweet Spice um, just by putting the most frequently used options at the top in a nice obvious place. Next we have the activity log which tells you what Tweet Spice is currently doing with your Twitter account, who it's following, who it's unfollowing, uh, whether it's updating the account, whether it's posting a tweet, um, whether it's performing a scheduled action, sending a direct message, oops, um, it's all detailed down in the activity log. So let's take a look at this in the software itself. Now this is already an established account. Um, I've had Tweet Spice running on it for just over um, a month and a half, six weeks, um, and we've currently got 3,987 friends, 3,788 followers, a friends to followers ratio of 1.05 to 1 and 14 tweets have been posted. Once you have got your account established and you have um, 2,000 friends, Twitter won't let you follow any more than 2,000 people until your followers ratio is within 10% of the people that you are following. So. If this is where the friends to followers ratio becomes very important. Now, it is the maximum you can have, or the maximum any of us can have, is 1.1 to 1 once you've gone over 2,000 friends. So, say for instance you had, you were following 2,000, 2001 people, um, and you only had uh, 1,100 people following you you would need to get the people following you up to 1,801 or 1,800 before Twitter would allow you to follow any more than 2,000 people. This can be a bit inconvenient um, but that's just one of their rules to prevent spam on the website itself and to preserve the service for all of its uh, users. Okay, so that's a basic overview of the information panel. It's very straightforward once you've uh, seen it for a couple of days and you understand the friends to followers ratio. Now, next we have the menu options which you can see along the top here. Now it's very straightforward you don't need to spend too much time with this I wouldn't imagine. The file you can switch accounts that just takes you back to the login screen um, it will prompt you to make sure you do want to switch accounts because when you switch your account and you close this one uh, that means that all activity on the account that was open will cease until you reopen TweetSpice for that account. So I'm going to say no here because I was just showing you the menu. You can also exit the software. You can view your block list. Uh, that's the users that you've blocked or the software has blocked. Um, so not to follow them again in future. You can add users to the safe list um, and that will add people to your safe list which the software will whitelist in effect so that uh, you can follow them and it won't unfollow them or block them. You can manage your welcome messages. This is for when you're sending direct messages. You can also search for friends and followers. You can view your sent direct messages history. This is very useful. You can also view which URLs you have shortened in the past. That's also very useful. And you can view a report, which is you can uh, specify which day you like using the easy to use navi navigation calendar. And it will tell you how many actions Tweet Spice has performed and what those actions were on a daily basis. Now, let's pop back to April and have a look at the 30th. Nope. Some days I have Tweet Spice set not to do 
not to take any actions at all just because um, it makes it look a bit more natural. Now you'll see on the 27th of April um, we followed 499 people, we unfollowed 169 people we were already following and we did 23 searches to add those 499 new friends and we disassociated ourselves with nine. Okay, so next we have the settings. This is for proxy servers. Um, you can add your own servers um, however you like. Uh, you can get plenty of free proxy server lists if you just go to Google and type in free proxy server lists or free proxies um, to get a list if you would like to use proxies. Um, I haven't had to use a proxy uh, so far but I'm not running uh, many accounts. I'm only running four accounts. Um, four separate Twitter accounts at once. I'm not running um, tens or hundreds of them. So you can view more details about this in the user manual. Next we have the set default parameters and values. This just restores the default settings. Um, I wouldn't click that unless you really want to. It just resets all of the variables that you have changed back to the default settings. Next we have maintenance, which you can compact clean up. That just compacts all of the databases that TweetSpice uses, which is um, text files. Uh, but it automatically should do this when you open and close the software anyway. And the files are relatively small, so you shouldn't really need to use that unless you notice the files are getting very large. Um, clear the following text box history. Um, you can check for updates and you can view the about under the help menu. So that gives you a basic overview of the main menu options. They're basic, they're pretty much self-explanatory so you should be able to figure most of these out um, how to use them yourself but we will go into these in more detail later in the series. Next we have the shortcut buttons which are mostly just what's located up in these menu options. You can switch the account is the first one. The second one you can target your following which just shortcuts you to the target following screen. That one shortcuts you to the schedule following screen. Next you can refresh your account info which by clicking this you'll notice in the activity log down the bottom it is receiving Twitter user account info and completed. So it's just updated all of the stats here uh, to see if there's been any changes on Twitter itself uh, since the last program update. Next we have a, a navigation button so you can navigate directly to your Twitter account. Um, you can view the reports, that's just a shortcut for the uh, view and report menu. So just by clicking that it just pops up what we've looked at already. Um, then we have the search for friends and followers, that's another shortcut to uh, the menu up here. Search friends and followers and the URL shortener which we've already seen um, oh no we haven't sorry um, if you click on the URL shortener that will pop up the uh, window the little application that shortens URLs for you and you can select a few different ones but we'll get into that a little deeper later in the video okay so that covers the menu options next we have the activity log which I've already briefly touched upon what you can see in here is all of the ac actions that TweetSpice has performed while you've been logged in. So if we just navigate down to the bottom you can see it's got today's date on it, uh, the time that the action was performed and it tells you it's completed once it's done. 